Awesome. All right. Here's part two. Question number two is about calculation groups. I've been using calculation groups for a while now, but they've become super popular and you've been releasing some content about how people can create them in Tabular Editor, which is a great tool. And Tabular Editor makes it so easy, but I'm finding myself with lots and lots of calculation items in my groups such as my time intelligence calculation group. I've got dozens of different items that all have different time offsets and rolling periods and whatever. So it's super useful because I don't have to create many, many multitude of additional measures to cover time intelligence, but I'm finding that my end users don't really understand it. When they drag a time intelligence group onto their canvas and it blows up their visual with dozens and dozens of different columns or, or different series, it's just, it's not entirely usable by them. They don't understand why it's doing that. And they really just want to pick items from inside the calculation group. So how do you make it more usable for end user? Should I be limiting my calculation groups to smaller number of items? I don't know. I want your thoughts on how you best utilize calculation groups and how I should do that too. All right. Okay, so um, this is a very good question. And uh, if you can switch it to my computer, Adam, we there can we show an article we published uh, a few weeks ago, August 1st, uh, where we actually describe uh, this problem, which is uh, a problem that many users have. So the idea is that when you have calculation groups, uh, you can have uh, the, the calculation group uh, is applied to the measures that you have. So for example, if I create a calculation group for time intelligence and I have different measures in my report, I may not want all the combinations of the calculation groups that I chose and all the measures I have. So let me show you this uh, report here. As you see, I actually have many calculation groups here, but uh, with a filter or a slicer, I actually selected only current year and year over year. So this is already a way. So you have to teach users uh, how to select the calculation groups they have. And uh, actually, this is a good idea. How, how can you pick only the calculation groups you want before putting them in the report? Because actually, you have to know that you want to filter. So you have to first apply the filter, then bring the calculation group here that has only two items selected now. See why and why or why? Because otherwise, by default, you will see all these calculation groups uh, multiplied by all the measures you have in the report. We have three measures. We chose uh, two calculation groups. A total, we have six columns in this matrix uh, with six combinations. What if my requirement uh, in uh, this report is uh, I want to show only sales uh, cost and margin for the current year, and I want to show the margin uh, with a difference with with the previous year without having these red columns. Okay, so today you cannot in Power BI. But guess what? This feature exists. In which tool this feature exists? Um, in Excel. So this button is, a, is, a, is an external tool that opens Excel connected to my local Power BI desktop model. I use this feature a lot to test my measures. And if I created the same report in Excel, you see that what I get is the following. So let's say that I have uh, the, the margin, the sales amount, uh, and the total cost here. And I apply something uh, in the rows. Uh, so for example, uh, for uh, each, uh, uh, let me see, let me see here, calendar month uh, in the rows. And I have my report. Now I include here the calculation group with the time uh, calculation intelligence here. So as you see, I have all the calculation, uh, uh, all the calculation items here, but I only select uh, these three. However, I still have my six combinations here plus the total I want to remove. So the total is easy to remove. I just have to go to the design of the pivot table, and I have to remove the the not the headers, the total here. So here, grand total. I remove this total. But the, the, the next step is how can I get only the combination I want? There is a feature we have here, which is uh, this feature uh, create uh, set based on column items, which uh, shows me all the combinations I have, and I can get rid of those that I don't like. So I delete this and I delete this. Uh, 
let me just one and two. Okay, so let's, oh, I want to keep the margin. So I want to delete this one and I click OK. What happens at this point? You get an MDX statement uh, that I'm going to show you now because there is a syntax used in MDX to do that. And it's called, technically, is a name set in MDX. And uh, once I have this, uh, here we go. I have my pivot table customized this way. Now, we don't have this feature in uh, Power BI because uh, DAX doesn't have name sets. However, even though we don't have name sets, it is not uh, impossible to think at uh, a user interface feature in Power BI that provides me the same uh, um, ability to choose combinations of items. And so the article here describes uh, this, the need for this feature, the use case for this feature, and Mika has a good one uh, that uh, actually fits in these requirements. And uh, here we also created uh, an idea on uh, Power BI ideas uh, that I suggest you to vote because with 128 votes, we will never get this feature done. So first, uh, vote this feature. Second, uh, if you can influence Microsoft because uh, you work in a large company, Try to tell to Microsoft, guys, we need this feature because maybe we will get this feature done at a certain point. Awesome. Wow. Awesome.